Hello everyone and welcome to our new tutorial. Today we will recreate the starts of Ruin from Elden Ring. Keep in mind we will recreate its mechanics and not visual effects. That is for you to create and make it fit your game's art style. However, if you want a more close visual representation of the stars, I have uploaded this one to my Patreon. There are lots of different cool assets in there and more to come, so if this interests you, go check it out. Without any further ado, let's get into it. Here we are in a rather empty project. I have set up a test scene with a plane that uses a checker material as well as a player controller to be able to look around. Alright, so we will start by creating an empty game object and naming it Spawner. Then create a new particle system as a child of the spawner called Start Loop. I'm going to quickly set up this particle system. Shape to a sphere with a radius of zero. Back up here, duration and lifetime to 2 seconds. Start speed to a random between two very low values. Start size to something small. Under render settings, I will change its material to the default particle. Enable size over lifetime and pick a curve going down. Create a new game object called star then duplicate the start loop and drag it from the spawner to our new game object. Rename it start loop, then change its duration and lifetime to 1 second. Start speed to a constant of 0.1 second, simulation speed to 5, simulation space to whirl so that it leaves a little trail behind. Duplicate this particle system and rename it impact effects. Under emission settings, remove its rate over time and add a burst, then back up here I will increase its duration and lifetime to 2 seconds and disable looping. Uh, Alright, good enough. Add a new c -sharp script to the spawner game object named Stars of Ruin, then add another c -sharp script to the start game object named Star Behavior. We will also need a sphere collider and for its radius you can play around and set it to whatever you want. For this tutorial I will try to match the size of the particle system we created. We'll be using the onTrigger function inside the start behavior script and for this to be called you need to check its trigger as well as have a rigid body with disable use gravity and its kinematic enabled. All right. Open the Stars of Ruin script and let's begin coding. Okay, so we will need a layer mask to detect the enemy which the target transform will follow, then a reference to the star prefab. The amount of stars we will create, two public floats, one for spawning stars and another for allowing the particle to play before destroying itself. A particle system a boolean to control our loops and lastly a timer for spawning stars. Inside start we need to reference the particle system we created earlier. Remember the name you type here must match the name of the game object we created. Set the timer to be the spawn interval. And now we have to do our raycast to assign the target for our starts to chase. So we create the raycast from the camera's position and if you have ever done a bullet script then this will be very familiar to you. So this raycast starts at the camera position forward for infinity. You can change the mathf infinity to whatever value you want if you need it to be of limited range when acquiring a target. Remember, we are doing this raycast once at the start function. So in here, you can do a check to make sure the tag of whatever we hit is an enemy or check its name or whatever other ways of checking if this is an actual enemy and then assigned the target to be the hit that transform. Under update we check if we are dead, then we return. Now we check if the amount is bigger or equals to zero, we do yet another check inside here to see if the timer is smaller or equals to zero. Create a new function called spawn star and add it in here. Else if the timer is bigger than zero, we need to lower it using time that delta time. If the amount is smaller than zero, we need to destroy this game object using the destroy delay and also stop the particle system from playing. This is why we have a destroy delay to allow particles to dissipate. 
we also need to set is that to true so that we stop this loop. Under our newly created function, we must reset the timer as well as lower the amount by 1. Then spawn the star at this transform position using this transforms rotation. Lastly, for this script, we need to check if we have assigned a target, which we do up here, right? So if we do have a target, we need to access the start behavior component of the start which is created and assign the target like this. Since we have not worked on the start behavior just yet, you will get an error here. So let's open our start behavior and up here add a public transform called target and save the script then go back to the start of ruin script and you will see no error anymore. Cool. Back onto our start behavior, we will need an array which we will use to cause the start to explode. Then a bunch of different floats. The duration of the star before it is destroyed, rotation speed, movement speed before and after we turn, the default destination target, distance before our turn, and destroy delay to allow particles to dissipate. We will also need a few vector trees. The default destination, which is where the stars will go if they do not have a target assigned, the start position, the way we are facing, and where we're going. A float to calculate the distance between two points, our rotation, and then our two particle systems. We will also need two booleans to control our different loops. Under start, we assign the particle systems. Make sure the names match. Store the start position. And now we will set the default destination to be this star's position plus the forward vector multiplied by the destination. Um, actually, let's change this to default destination distance instead. Okay, that's better. Now we have to rotate the star. In Elden Ring, the star spawn with a random rotation around a circle. To achieve this, we will first store the current rotation in a temporary variable and then rotate it 90 degrees on the y-axis, as well as give it a random rotation on the x-axis. Inside update, we have to do our loops. So first we need to check if we are not dead, then check if we have turned, and then inside here we check again if we have assigned a target, in which case we will set the face direction to be the target's direction, as well as the going to position to be the target's position. However, if we do not have a target, then we will face the default destination and set the ongoing position, sorry, the going to position to be the default destination as well. Now inside here, we need to rotate the start using the face direction and slurp these values to make it rotate smoothly. We also need to move the start, so we simply use a translate forward using the after turn speed. Down below, we check if the distance between this start position and going to position and if it is smaller or equals to say 0.2 units, which is really close, we create a new function and add it in here. Okay, so if we have not turned, we need to move the transform forward still, but using the before turn speed. And we also need to check if the distance between the start and the start position, and if the distance is bigger than the distance before turn variable, we set the has turn boolean to true. Outside here, we need to check if the duration is smaller or equals to zero, and if that is the case, we call the explode function, and if it is in the case, then we simply lower the duration using time that delta time. Awesome. Now, under our new function, we first set the is dead boolean to true to stop all our loops inside update, and we also have to stop our loop particle system, play the import particle system, and destroy the star using the destroy delay to allow the impact effects to play out. Lastly, we do the on trigger enter. In here, we check if the collision tags to check array contains the tag of this collider. You will get an error here, and that is because you need to come up here and add using system.link. After you add that line, the error will be gone. In here, we also need to check if we are not dead. Awesome, so now you can damage your enemy. I can't really tell you how to do this since every single project is different, but it will be something like this, I guess. You will have to access the enemy script of the collider and lower its health somehow. Maybe you have a function that handles damage on your enemy script, or maybe you just lower its health. I, I do not know this. 
All I know is that you have to call the explode function afterwards, and we are finally done. Let's uh, take a quick glimpse at my player controller so you can see how to spawn this. All you need is a reference to the prefab up here, and then under update we check if we have pressed whatever key you want. I will use the mouse left click and you will spawn it in front of the camera using the camera's rotation. Just like you would mouse bullets in first person games, right? Back in Unity, I'm going to drag my scripts into my scripts folder to keep things nice and neat. Then I will create a new folder called prefabs and drag both the star and spawner in here to create prefabs. Now I can just delete them from my scene and assign the spawn prefab to my controller like this. For testing, I will create a cube and give it the enemy tag. And for now, I will just keep it on the default layer, but you can change this, right? I will move it up here and duplicate it two times and rename it to enemy. Okay, remember the tag and layer mask. Open your spawner prefab and let's set some of these values. The layer mask needs to be the default, right? Target we set through code. Drag our star prefab in here and for amount I will do... Um, I think 12 stars is the amount in Elden Ring, so I'm just gonna do 12. For spawn interval, they spawn super fast, so I will do one and a half millisecond. For destroy delay, let me check the star loop particle system. And duration is 2 seconds, so I will set this to 2.5. Okay, open up the star prefab now and... Um, oh wait, on your impact effects you need to disable play on awake. Okay, back up here, the target was set through code, right? For collision tags to check, we add enemy and also you could add like ground or wall or whatever else you wish this uh, start to be able to collide with. Duration, we will do 10 seconds. Rotation to something high like uh, 50. Before turn speed, I will make it move very slowly and after turn speed, it will move pretty fast. Default destination distance, you can check here how many units you want it to go forward by default, if no target has been assigned, of course. I will do... Um, I, I guess 10 is fine. Now distance before turning, I will do just one unit. And lastly, destroy delay, let me check the impact effects and... Okay, I will do 3 seconds. We're all done. Let's hit play and test things out. <laughs> okay, awesome. It's all working as intended. I'm going to hit pause and change the after turn speed to a low value and increase the amount it spans so that I can see them chasing the target. And yep, pretty cool, right? That is it for this tutorial. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, you can get these files by becoming a patron. It contains a prefab with custom textures and materials that look just like the stars in Elden Ring. If this type of content interests you, please like and subscribe. I have a ton of more cool tutorials and game dev content coming up, so stay tuned. Thank you for watching, and I will see you on the next video.